Welcome back to Upfront and our conversation with Democratic Assembly Leader Peter Barca and Republican Speaker Robin Voss. Let's talk about Act 10. Uh, the court upheld Act 10, the collective bargaining law. Uh, the question many people have now is will this law be expanded to cover police and firefighters? Is that going to happen? Well, first of all, I'm incredibly proud that the Supreme Court has upheld Act 10 as constitutional. We have said from the very beginning that there is no constitutional right to have forced union membership in the state, and they have now shown that that's not true. Uh, we've won at the federal level, we've won at the state level, and hopefully, finally, liberal activists can put that behind us. As far as looking at other things to do with Act 10, uh, I have always been open to saying we want to guarantee that police and fire are treated equally like their others. Uh, but don't forget, as part of the law, we already have that all new employees who are hired uh, as a police or firefighter uh, are already paying toward their pensions and their health care. So some of it's already being taken care of as people choose to retire and move on. If, if that ever came up, would there be some Democratic support for expanding the law? Would there be Democrats who would say, you know, as long as we have Act 10, mm -hmm. it should apply to cops and firefighters? I think it'd be very unlikely. You might find one or two. Uh, Why but would I it be unlikely? It? The mayor says if you're going to say I have to do Act 10, then let me at least gain greater savings mm -hmm. by having firefighters and police officers participate. Well, because we know for 50 years in this state, it worked well. Uh, collecting bargaining uh, made sure that you had a strong, vibrant middle class in this state. Um, and that's just similar to private sector bargaining rights, which, of course, I know the speaker's been an author of taking away bargaining rights for private sector workers as well. So we, we believe that it's one element that protects worker safety ensuring reasonable working conditions for people. It's worked well in the state. We don't believe it should, you should take away that right from anybody. So why extend it to, to more groups of workers? Uh, why go to right to work? I know they want to move in that direction. We want to go back to protecting people's uh, worker safety. We already have that in your civil service protection. Well, so let me ask you about his, uh, his claim, though, that you want to move towards right to work. Because I, I saw you asked about that the other day, and you said it's not something you plan to do in the mm -hmm. next session. Why not? I mean, given what's happened in Michigan, given what's happened in, in surrounding states, Indiana, uh, I know you believe in it. Mm -hmm. Why not propose it? Well, first of all, I do believe that no one should be forced to join a union just to go and work at a uh, job site. I think that that's wrong. Uh, my Democratic friends think that it's okay to have compulsory union membership so that they can extract dues to use for political purposes. I think that's wrong. Uh, but I also look and say that as we are growing our economy, the public sector and the private sector are different. When I have gone and toured union training facilities, they show how they work with labor and management uh, to figure out ways to make a company profitable. They actually pay for all their own pension, their own training. There are distinct differences. Uh, so while I think that I do not, I, I know I don't believe in compulsory union membership, I just think public and private sector unions are different and we should treat them that way. I, I want to shift. Let, let me shift because sure. this is sort of tied in. I, because I want to talk about the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. You, you said last week that uh, in, in terms of, uh, of what they do for incentives for companies, you don't want them giving incentives. Uh, to companies that outsource work. And I want to get into this outsourcing conversation. Uh, the governor. Well, actually, that's not my position. Actually, that was the governor had suggested that. What I that's believe. That's not your position. What my position is, is that you should not give public money to a company right. um, that then could turn around and use those resources in order to How outsource. How is that different than the governor's position? Well, I, and, and the governor now supports that element of what I put forward. But what's different is the governor had suggested that any company that had any outsourcing would not get any public dollars. What I'm saying is let's have them certify that if something changes in terms of their working, uh, the number of employees that they have working, if something were to change in terms of their beginning to outsource, that we have instant access to find out whether or not it's affecting their contractual obligation to the taxpayers to create the jobs they said they would. Um, that's the difference. And at the SBA, of course, I headed the Midwest and headed a national commission for the uh, in the Clinton administration, and there we made borrowers certify um, those types of things. If the project wouldn't go forward, if it wouldn't have been for the I don't have any guarantee. problem with that whatsoever. Okay. I just wish we had done it when Trek uh, was working on all the projects that they're having, and we gave them assistance uh, to grow in Wisconsin. And we now see. So you're Burke. fine uh, with what he's proposing? Yeah, I have no problem. The governor's with the, talking about. I have no problem with saying that we would not use taxpayer dollars to outsource jobs. I don't have any problem going to a company. I think Peter's in the same place. If, if that's one part of their business, uh, I don't have a problem with them outsourcing because you have to produce products all over the world. But the hypocrisy of people like Mary Burke saying that we need to have an artificially increased wage in Wisconsin, we need to put all those restrictions on Wisconsin companies, but she still can choose to have her family get wealthy by outsourcing jobs to China and paying well, state let, let labor me wages. 
respond really to that, though, because seconds clearly what Mary up. Burke's saying, she wants a strong, vibrant middle class. She wants to increase the minimum wage so that people can have family-supporting jobs. The Republicans, time and time again, have made it harder to have a strong middle class in this state. That's why we're tenth of tenth in the, and all that in, in the Midwest for jobs. jobs to and that's, just that's like she's the problem. We, we need another segment, but we don't have one. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap it up right there and say thanks to both of you, Speaker Robin Boss thanks, and the Minority Thank Leader you, in the Assembly, Democrat Peter Barker. Thanks very much. The House of Representatives has voted to sue the president. Is it a serious constitutional issue or just election year politics? I'll be asking Republican Wisconsin Congressman Sean Duffy next. But first, in our Wiz Politics Week Ahead, WizPolitics.com will co sponsor a debate with the Democratic candidates for Attorney General Tuesday at the UW Law School in Madison.